Let's take a look at oil here. Oil prices on the move with crude just around 71 bucks a barrel. Now this move here in crude and why we're taking a look at Brent as well comes as tensions escalate in the Middle East. Iran sending a warship into the Red Sea after the U.S. destroyed three Houthi rebel ships, killing 10 militants over the weekend. This is all according to multiple reports. So as the situation continues to escalate, can we expect more volatility for oil? We want to bring in Andy Lipow. He's the president of Lipow Oil. Associates. Andy, it's great to have you here. So we are seeing crude. We did see it move uh, higher in earlier trading now, just around 71 bucks a barrel. But as we do see tensions escalate here in the Red Sea, how do you see that impacting oil, at least in the short term? Well, good morning and thank you for having me. In the near term, the bias for oil prices is going to be on the upside. I should point out that since Hamas invaded Israel, we have yet to see any oil supply disruption. But as tension rises, the market is increasing the probability that a mistake might be made that results in a supply disruption, whether it's through the Red Sea transit lanes or through the Strait of Hormuz. Well, I'm curious then, Andy, which geopolitical tension is the most concerning for President Biden right now when it comes specifically to the impact it has on the price of oil? Is it what we're seeing in the Red Sea? Is it the climate change impact that we're seeing uh, in the Panama Canal? Which one has the biggest potential to keep President Biden up at night, given the impact it could have on the price of oil? Well, President Biden is in a dilemma because on the one hand, the administration is focused on gasoline prices. And on the other hand, he wants to keep oil supplies flowing in order to tamp down the price of crude oil, which means that geopolitically, this is all wrapped up actually between the Middle East, Iran, Venezuela, and Russia. And he's got to be playing all of those um, issues at the same time. Of course, Iran is backing Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Houthi rebels. And we, of course, have Iran aligned with Russia. So you can see how all of these issues are inextricably linked together, causing the Biden you know, uh, administration a number of sleepless nights. So Andy, you said the bias here is to the upside. We're at 71 bucks a barrel, just above 71 bucks a barrel today. How much higher are we headed? Well, I think a year from now, we're going to be looking at 85 to $87 a barrel. But in between now and then, we could see oil prices fall to below $67 a barrel based on Chinese demand. And on the other hand, we could see them reach 93 to $95 a barrel if there were to be a supply disruption in the Middle East. And talk to me about that a little bit more, Andy, that supply disruption in the Middle East. Talk me through what you know to be the thinking behind some of that disruption and what some of those decisions look like so that we can kind of anticipate what's to come from that. Well, certainly the drone attacks in the Red Sea have caused many companies to reroute their tankers around the Cape of Good Hope. And of course, that increases the cost from shipping uh, standpoint, as well as increases the the uh, cost of the oil that's going to be delivered to uh, various locations around the world. Through the Red Sea, we've got oil from the Persian Gulf moving into Europe. At the same time, Russian and North African oil is moving in the opposite direction through the Red Sea into markets in Asia and India. So that is one thing that we're looking at. Of course, 20% of the uh, of the world's uh, oil supplies are moving through the Strait of Hormuz. So if we should see tensions escalate, especially between Iran and the U.S. or Iran and Saudi Arabia, there could be a supply disruption in that part of the world. So, and I think a lot of viewers at home are asking themselves what this means for gas prices. We know that that has been the focal point here for many viewers. Right now, we're right around 310 a, uh, 310 a gallon, excuse me, nationwide average, according to AAA. Are we headed back then towards at least 350? Well, I think the national average across this year is going to be below $3.50 a gallon, which will be good news for consumers because that will be less than we saw last year in 2023. But I do think as we get to the end of the summer, we could see the national average peak at about $3.75 a gallon. I am certainly not projecting 
the national retail average to go above $4 a gallon or even $5 a gallon. And one of the big beneficiaries uh, for, uh, for the oil market has been the increase in oil production here in the United States, which is up about 10% compared to December of 2022 at an all-time record of 13.3 million barrels a day, which of course is helping to mitigate any oil price increases. All right, Andy, we really appreciate you joining us to break down all of the big movements in the oil market. Andy LaPau joining us uh, from LaPau Oil Associates. He's the president over there. Andy, thank you so much.